think that the worst part of it is all these kids have gone through a divorce. Um, and I, people go, well, they didn't go through the divorce. The parents went through divorce. No, um, kids go through it. Uh, you know, you, no matter how much you think you hide it, there's an emotional attachment to the mother and the children and to the father, you know, that whole group. And when there's, when there's that unsettledness that's going on, everybody around feels it, including the children. The children feel it the worst because they know that there's no connection. And that foundation that I talked about earlier about building that foundation and that security around your family so they know that they're secure is just blown up. There's no security anymore. And so then the kids feel like they're just floating around out there. And who can they turn to? They can't turn to father. They can't turn to mother because, you know, they're angry or frustrated. And so you see a lot of that out there. And so I think that for what I try to do is just add a little bit of support, letting them know that it's going to be okay. What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lee. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. Today's guest on the podcast is MMA legend and UFC Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock. Uh, Ken Shamrock was one of the pioneers of the UFC. He also had a successful WWF career. Uh, it's a big honor to have him on the podcast today. So get down there, smack the subscribe button, tap the like, and let's jump into it right now with Ken Shamrock on First Class Father. Uh, joining me now, First Class Father, Ken Shamrock. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Okay. All right, well, let's start right here. How many kids do you have? How old? <laughs> I got seven kids. Uh, one of them is 32, uh, which is my the oldest girl. The next oldest girl is she's 28. Um, then my oldest boy, who is 20, uh, he's 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 my oldest boy is is 29. And then my second oldest girl is 27. And then my second oldest boy is 26. And then uh, my youngest, no, that would be my, yeah, my youngest, youngest boy is 25 and my youngest girl's 24. Man, that's a lot to cover. 16, I, I, 16 grandbabies. Wow. Wow. Well, congratulations on that. Hey, Ken, if you could real quick, just take a second to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Yeah. My name is Ken Shamrock. Um, I'm a ultimate fighter uh, where I fought in the very first UFC, became a champion, fought over in Pancreas in Japan, which is also mixed martial arts, became the first champion there. Um, I was born in Macon, Georgia, um, went through uh, a, a bad upbringing through group homes and, and uh, end up getting adopted by the, the guy that owned the group home. His name is Bob Shamrock I'm, and my mom, Dee Dee Shamrock. And from then I was raised by them and taught the, the skills of life. And, uh, and then I went on to uh, actually be a professional fighter and uh, raise my own family with seven kids and 16 grandbabies. My wife is Tanya Shamrock, um, who I've known for a very long time. Yeah, well, obviously, you've had a legendary career, Ken. Uh, you know, we, watching it has been something miraculous here over the, over the course of your entire career. So uh, take me back to the beginning of your fatherhood journey then, Ken. About how old were you when you became a dad and how did becoming a father kind of change your perspective on life? Yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy, too, because I was like bouncing in nightclubs and, and, and having fun. Um, ended up having my first child when I was 24. Um, which I believe in today's world is definitely um, older. Uh, it seems like everybody's having babies at 17 and 18, 19 years old. Uh, but I waited till I was 24 um, and had my first child. Yeah, very cool. Now, did did your upbringing and uh, you said you bounced around group home, the group home, did your upbringing, how did that kind of weigh in or play into your own fatherhood? Did, were you able to um, draw any positives? Did you have any negatives that carried over? What was that like for you? Take me through that. What was the experience like for you and then transforming that into yourself as a dad? Well, I know that, you know, and I've experienced watching other people who have gone through um, rough childhoods. And, you know, it, I guess it depends on what kind of character or personality you have, but I'm sure that all of them have the idea that they're never gonna 
let their kids go through what they went through. And some of them just don't want to have kids because they think, you know, why would they put their kids through this kind of hell? Um, but in my mind, I thought to myself, there's no way, you know, that I, I would ever want to put my kids in a situation where they'd have to endure the, the sufferings that I did, even though at the time it didn't feel like I was suffering. Uh, you just live life and you think it's normal. Uh, but as you get older, you understand, hey, that wasn't how kids are supposed to grow up and things that happen to you that's not supposed to happen. Um, so I, 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 I promised myself that that would never happen. I would never put my kids through that. Obviously, there's things that are out of your control that the things happen in life that you can't stop from happening. They just do. But what you can control is what you can do for your children. And that's to love them, to care for them, to discipline them and have them have an understanding of what it is to be successful and what they have to do in order to put themselves in position to be successful. Yeah, very well said, Ken. And, and on that, what would you consider to be the top values uh, that you hope to instill in your kids? Well, first of all, I think that, I, 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 I mean, I, I don't think it's, 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 it's a secret, but I truly believe that every parent should instill confidence in their children. Um, they should be able to make decisions on their own. Uh, I see a lot of times when, kid, when parents are raising children, there's a certain thing that you do when they're growing up that you help them and guide them into making good decisions. But then they get to a certain point when they're 16 and 17 and 18 years old where you have to let them make their own decisions and let them fall on their face. And then you be there to help pick them back up and help explain to them what happened and how they could be better next time. I think in today's world, there's so much of that being taken away because I think there's too much um, involvement of trying to dictate what your children are doing or force your children to do certain things. And I truly believe when they get to it in their teens, that you've got to allow them to start making decisions, you know, especially ones where you know it's not going to hurt them. Um, it may disappoint them. Uh, it may discourage them, but allow them to make those decisions. And if it doesn't work out, teach them how to overcome those situations and how to be stronger and making bad decisions. You still can recover and be stronger for that because you have now experienced that. Um, and I think that, you know, for me, I know with my kids, allowing them to, make a lot of decisions um, and to be able to have a lot of experiences that they're able to choose for themselves, um, allow them to be able to become adults much faster. Um, and I think that's the reason why my kids, at least thank God that they're all doing very well is because I allow them to be individuals and to make decisions and have thoughts of their own, not necessarily my thoughts or my wife's thoughts, their thoughts. Yeah, great stuff, Ken. And I have four kids myself. My oldest is 15. My youngest is my only girl. She's seven. You've been through a lot of this, obviously, already. One thing that I'm you know, concerned about now is obviously the dating scene is coming soon. A little bit longer, thank God, for my daughter. But how did you kind of handle this uh, when your kids, especially daughter, became old enough to start dating? I made mistakes, you know, because in your mind, you know, when you're, they're dating uh, ones that you know that you just don't want them to date. Uh, they just, you know, but but you have to bite your tongue because the more that you fight against it, the more they're going to want it. And then they're going to make bad decisions because they're mad at you. Um, so I think you have to step back and allow those things to play out and they will play out and, um, and they'll be okay. They're going to be okay. So I think what you do from the time that they're, you know, 10, 12, 11 years old, instilling confidence in them, instilling um, work ethic in them, instilling beliefs uh, and morals in them. So as they get older, even though they may not make some good decisions, depending on what you have taught them up to that point, they're still instilled in them and they do know that they're there and they will sooner or later make that decision that is right. Um, so for me, I think a lot of it had to do with just backing up and, and being there uh, and making comments to them, suggestions to them, even though they, you don't think they're listening when you're saying it to them, they are. Um, but not to get so entangled into something to where you force them to just do it just out of despite. Um, so I think a lot of it, and it's very tough as a father to step back from your daughter and allow her to make those mistakes. 
uh, is hard because um, you know you know what's coming, right? You just you just know there's gonna be they're gonna be tear jerkers, they're gonna be sad, they're gonna be upset, but they're gonna be okay. And so I think just as a father, not to hold on too tight and just always love them and be there for them. Yeah, awesome stuff, Ken. And then taking it one step further, obviously you mentioned all the grandkids you had. What was the transition like from you uh, going from father to grandfather? What's that experience been like for you? Beautiful. Um, you know, there's just something to be said about being a parent. It's special. There's a lot of things that you both do, um, which are your first time. First time for your children, first time for you. And those are experiences and memories that you will always cherish. They will always have those to think back on and, and, to, and to be able to you learn from those things, right? So as you become a grandparent, now all of a sudden, all of those experience and thoughts and, and, and cherished moments that you've had with them are now being brought out in these grandchildren because now you get to love on them, you get to, to spoil them, and then you get to send them back home but you know, because you're sending them back home, that their their thoughts and their minds are because of the way that you raised them and the way you allowed them to be who they are. Those kids are going to be raised properly. So you can love on them and, and cherish them and spoil them and send them home knowing they're going to be OK and they're going to be raised properly. And I tell you, that's a great feeling. I know there's times where your kids grow up and and. Maybe they have kids and, and they marry somebody that have different thoughts and different morals. I think we think wait. No, I know that we weigh too much into that and it causes too much hurt as opposed to just stepping back and allow them to build their lives the way they're going to build it. Love your grandchild and then love them and, and, and have that relationship with them. And I promise you. If you're the one that's constantly giving encouragement and constantly loving on them and constantly supporting them, they are more than likely in the end are going to be leaning in your direction towards the way that you're doing things rather than somebody that's constantly trying to force them to be some 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 way. Yeah, very cool. Well said, Ken. Listen, I'm in no hurry to get there myself, but I'm sure uh, the, the feeling is all that you say it is. Take me into like uh, I would imagine I've had several UFC fighters on the podcast here. I would imagine the the um you know the dichotomy of being a a fighter for a living and being a father has to be uh, difficult to kind of navigate at sometimes. Did did becoming a father kind of change you as a fighter? Did it did it make you ever um consider? Obviously, you fought not that long ago, uh, five years ago or so. But did did it ever uh, make you consider uh leaving the the game or leaving the fight game early? No, never. Not a thought. It made me want to fight longer. Um, it, it, because I wanted my kids to be proud of me. I wanted to leave a legacy behind, uh, because I came, I came into this with nothing. I had no legacy, no, no roots, no family roots. Um, so for me, it was really about me cementing a legacy, you know, for my kids. So is that as they grow up, they have those, that foundation of family under them and, uh, and a foundation of some success. Um, obviously, I want them to do things on their own. I want them to build their own lives and I want them to have their own success. But having a foundation built up around them, knowing what success looks like and knowing what it takes to be successful is what was important when doing this and when fighting and building this, having them understand what it took, not not the celebrity status and, and not the money status. But what did it take for me to get there? What did it take for me to be in that position? And it was staying in the gym, working my butt off, making sure that I went through the details. And then if I lost a fight, going in and finding out what I did wrong and, and correcting it, teaching him those types of things in my career, whether it was in your job or someone else's job, those failures and those successes happen every day. Therefore, you have to teach your children in whatever, whatever thing that you're involved with about the failures and the success and how you respond from failure. So to me, that's what it was about when I was fighting, when I was enjoying my career and reaching the top. At the same time, I was teaching my kids, my family on what it was like to actually keep being successful and trying to stay on the top and what it took to stay there. Yeah. Hey, great stuff. And it kind of steals the thunder of my follow-up question there is obviously your legacy is secure in the UFC, in the MMA world. Uh, but what do you want your legacy to be as a dad? Yeah. You know, 
it, it, for me, it's not really about what I did in the ring. I think it's more about what I did outside of the ring. What kind of father was I? What kind of husband was I? What kind of human being was I? Um, you know, and that's why with what I do now with my with my charity work that I do, the Lions Den Ministry, um, the stuff that I do for children at risk, um, which is a lot of part of my ministry, um, is that I turn around and try to help other people. Even with the new organization I have with ValorBK.com, if you want to go check it out, it's the bare knuckle league that I have. I want to be able to help other fighters achieve those goals and, and feel what I felt, uh, the success in the ring uh, and reaching out to kids that are struggling maybe, but, and the only thing they know how to do is fight and be able to give them a life and be able to watch them grow as people. Uh, because to me, I think that without that, I, I'm not where I'm at. So all those things I just mentioned, I think is, is what I want my legacy to be, not necessarily the championships and the winnings, but more about, okay, he did that, but then what did he do to turn around and help other people do the same thing? Yeah, really good stuff, uh, Ken. And one thing I talk about on this show a lot is the fatherless crisis that we have going on in our country. We got so many kids growing up without a father or a father figure in their life. Um, do you see this through your um, charitable works and, and and people that you're helping out? Do you see this uh, in real time? The father, a lot of kids coming from fatherless households. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it is, and it's crazy too because I think that the worst part of it is is that <clears throat> all these kids have gone through a divorce. Um, and I, people go, well, they didn't go through the divorce. The parents went through the divorce. No, um, kids go through it. Uh, you know, you, no matter how much you think you hide it, there's an emotional attachment to the mother and the children and to the father and the mother and, you know, that whole group. And when there's, when there's that unsettledness that's going on, everybody around feels it, including the children. The children feel it the worst because they know that there's no connection and that foundation that I talked about earlier about building that foundation and that security around your family. So they know that they're secure is just blown up. There's no security anymore. And so then the kids feel like they're just floating around out there and who can they turn to? They can't turn to father. They can't turn to mother because you know, they're angry or frustrated. And so you see a lot of that out there. And so I think that for what I try to do is just add a little bit of support letting them know that it's going to be okay. You know, um, no matter what happens, your mother and father are always going to be your mother and father. They may move on and do other things, but they're still going to be there. It's just going to look different. Yeah. Well, Hey, thank God for what you're doing. Uh, uh bad respect for that. And uh, we definitely need more people like you out there helping, uh, cause there are so many kids, especially in need. And, uh, you know, what's next for you here, Ken? Obviously, you had a listen. We see all these guys now, uh, Holyfield fighting Belfort. We see uh, Anderson Silver fighting Tito. Any plans for you to get in the boxing ring? What, what's next for you? What kind of goals you got? Listen, <clears throat> I'm not doing the Valor Bare Knuckle League. Um, I'm, a, I'm a promoter now. Uh, I'm working outside the ring. Um, I want to be able to offer uh, other people opportunities to get in there and be successful like I was. Um, so for me, that's the exciting part right now is watching these guys' eyes light up. Uh, they come from nothing, uh, and all of a sudden they start feeling success inside the uh, bout circle that we have. It's a beautiful thing to see because you know that they're, they're being successful. They're doing what they love doing, and without this, they would still be struggling. So for me, it's just beautiful to see people's eyes light up knowing that they have a life now and something that they love doing. Very cool. Last thing I want to hit you with here, Ken, I'd love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for that new dad or for that about to be father who's out there listening? Yeah, listen, there's no rule book. Um, I mean, everybody's going to tell you, you know, how you should do this and how you should do that. Every kid is different. As they grow up, they have their own personalities. I say this with, with all the love in the world. You must let your children have their own identity. Stop trying to mold them in what you want them to be. Allow them to grow, give them boundaries of rights and wrongs, but allow their character and their personality to blossom in their own character. Very well said. I love the message. This has been an honor for me. I got to say, Ken Shamrock, you're a first class father all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on First Class Fatherhood. I appreciate it. Thank you.